Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to continue our toy train model. And in this video, I'm going to add the little axle peg that goes right here. Okay, so I've got my drawing sheet ready to go to look at. This is the drawing sheet I'm going to use. And I'm going to comprise it of a cylinder. Okay, right here. And then I'm going to do a revolve feature to get the head and an extrude cut. And there's a little chamfer at the end. Make sure I don't forget about that. Okay, so first I'm going to start a new sketch, and that head is actually going to slide all the way until the underside hits right here, so this is really going to be the kind of the beginning or end of the cylindrical part. So I'm going to start a sketch right here. I'm going to use my circle tool. I'd like to have, yep, it's already detecting that circle. I want to be concentric, so I'm going to make a center right there, and the diameter of that, if you go back to the drawing sheet, is quarter inch 0.25 okay so on this drawing sheet here you have a copy of these to be looking at um, it's really given to you in the thread notes this one quarter by 20 UNC this is a quarter inch diameter means there's 20 threads per inch it's one inch long with a quarter inch offset um, and the one is the actual overall length the quarter inch offset means that um, the threads don't begin at the very um, kind of beginning of the cylinder. Now, with Inventor, we had a way to throw some thread kind of notation on inside the part model, even though it didn't like physically change the model. It was still really just a cylinder, it just kind of graphically gave us this view. I haven't find a, found a way to do that with Onshape. I believe we've actually got to model the real threads. So because of that, we're going to skip that. We can always, if we don't care about changing the actual model and all we do is want to document it, we can always add notes in the drawing sheets. Okay, so um, I've got a circle with the correct diameter and I'm going to extrude it. The default one inch. I'm going to accept that. Okay, now if I want to hide the visibility of the body should be able to see the end of that and let's add the chamfer tool and that was a 45 degree by 0 0.03 so let's try to change that to 0 0.03 right now and then go grab that little edge and there you go we've added just a little chamfer okay I'll leave the train body off for the time being so you can still see that uh, actually, no, I'm going to turn back on. I know why. Um, okay, so to do the revolve of that feature, I really want to sketch on a plane that when I look at the plane, I'm, you know, normal to it. I'm looking kind of in this angle, and that would be parallel to the underside of the train. So that's why I turn the train body back on. So I'm going to use the plane tool. I'm going to do an offset plane, offset to this face. And it's going the wrong direction. It's kind of went under the train body, so I'm going to hit these little arrows to make it go the opposite direction. And then the distance is really the distance that the center of the hole was in the train body from the bottom, which was a half inch. So if I make that a half inch, hit the tab key to move that, that should put it, yep, pretty much right in the middle, okay? So that is going to be my sketch plane. So let's start a new sketch on this plane. There you go. And this little box represents that there's a new sketch plane. If I press N, I'm going to be normal to it. I can always rotate if I want. Um, but there you go. Now, it makes it hard to see where the axle is, the center, right? So I'm going to go ahead and tilt this a little bit. And I'm going to use project geometry. I'm going to grab that circle. And that should now give me, I don't know if you can see those two points. I would like it in this orientation better. There we go. Okay. But this is the full circle. Okay. Now these planes showing up if I press P, it's the keyboard shortcut to hide and show planes. So Alright. So from there I'm going to use the line tool. And I want to find the center of that. And I'm going to have 
one line that comes out beyond the cylinder. We'll get the diameter in a second, or radius. I guess I'm really doing half. Okay, I'll turn line tool off, and let's see. There's going to be a line that goes up, another one that goes over because there's a flat spot here. If we kind of toggle back and look, try to understand the geometry. We're coming out. I should have on that first line come out and also come vertical just a little bit to make that lip. But going vertical now from the middle is really just creating my kind of my axis of revolution to get to the top, which on the top there's actually a flat part. So then I went horizontal to create that flat spot. And then I'm gonna have an arc. Um, so let's turn off this line or turn off and turn it back on. I want to add that little vertical piece, and I'll add the arc in a second, but let me get this stuff dimensioned. So um, the outer part right here, I can see this leader line gives me the diameter of 0.422, so that would be a radius of half, which is this distance right here, 0.211. Um, the height, there is this line right here, this extension line coming out here. Okay, follow the arrow tip, kind of try to understand what that's giving you. Here's the other arrow tip, follow that extension line. It's to the underside of that. So this is the height, it's an eighth of an inch. Okay, let's look at this leader line. That's giving me the radius, so that's gonna be for the arc. We'll come back to that. This one is giving me the hex. We're gonna come back to that. Okay, this one right here is giving me the diameter of the circle, that flat part on top. So it's a diameter of a quarter, which means it's a radius of an eighth. So that's this length will create that flat circle. Okay, I also want this height of this little guy. Okay, I had these other little arrows here. And so that little distance is 0 0.031. Pretty much everything turned black now, so this is fully constrained with dimensions. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my three-point arc. Now, based on where this is when I click, it might want to, do you see, I'm not going to move my mouse, but just down and right from my cursor, there's a little symbol, it's a circle with a line. That tells me that if I click right now, and you can see the segment below that is orange, if I click right now, I'm going to get a tangent constraint with the arc I'm creating and that orange line. If I move off of that, you have to move off of it enough that it goes away. Now that's gone. Okay, if I click there, that constraint, because everything else is already kind of locked in, is going to make my arc constrained and not be able to move. If I move it, it'll not be tangent anymore. Well, what if that's not the radius I wanted? Because they did give me a radius, right? So let's not have that constraint created, or let's do real quick and just show you what happens. So let's say I didn't realize that because there's probably somebody out there who didn't realize. And then you see this radius and you're kind of following me and go, okay, all right, I'm going to make a radius of 0.236. Is it going to let me? No. Oh, all this red's telling me there's an error. All right, let's hit the back button. Okay, the reason being is that this was tangent to that. If I just simply hover over the arc to try to understand it better, that geometric constraint shows up. So I'm going to hover over that and notice that that little line segment turned orange too. So it lets me know that that relationship, you know, what it's created with. I can right click on it and I can say delete sketch entity and that is the tangent entity. Notice how it turned blue. Now I can grab that center point and I can move it where before I wouldn't, wasn't able to. Okay, so now I'll be able to change the radius. So let's grab the dimension tool. Let's delete that. 236. There you go. It is an arc. It's not, you know, from far away it almost looks like a line, but it, there is curve to it, right? All right, so that's it. Now let's use the revolve tool. So finish that sketch. We're going to revolve this area around this axis. And this is not going to be a new part. This is going to be added to the cylinder I had created. 
So the merge scope is going to be part 9. I hadn't read any. There we go. All right. Last little bit. Let's use the sketch right here on the face. I'm going to turn normal. I'm going to use the polygon tool. I can find the middle of that face. And I'm going to click. Now the little number that shows up is actually asking how many sides do I want my polygon to have. If I move my mouse down, it starts making the number bigger. If I move my mouse up, it starts making it smaller. So it actually went to 6, which is what I wanted a hexagon. So right there, I'm going to click. And now let's add dimensions. Right here, the hex socket head. It tells me that it's 5 30 seconds across the flats. So let's use my dimension tool and go across the flats. And if you don't know what 5 30 seconds is, good news, you can literally just type 5 divided by 32. And Onshape will do it for you. And that's my sketch. The depth of that okay, was right here, 0 0.111. So I went to extrude. I don't want to add, I want to remove. I want to change that to 0 0.111. And the merge scope should be part 9, which is this axle peg. We'll give it a name in just a second. All right, there you go. That's the axle peg. So I'm going to go ahead and rename part nine, the axle peg. You can change the color if you want by right clicking. I right clicked to rename. I can right click to edit appearance and you can change uh, material, all that. I don't know what's a color I haven't used yet or just something where I'm going to get contrast here. Just to make it stand out a little better. There you go. That's the axle peg. Hope you guys are able to follow along and create that next shape. So if you wanted to go one step, kind of not even really one step, but um, if you want, just like with the wheel, once I modeled one wheel, I used the pattern tool to pattern it into all the other locations. You could go ahead and pattern that axle into the others. Okay. I'll do that now, but I'm going to speed up my video. So you'll probably lose audio when I do that.